Okay, so yeah, we're gonna be talking about, so I dubbed it efficient schematic design and how basically how to do that in Flux. So this is kind of a part of a series of, of, of crash courses. So it's our fourth crash course, this is second session. Um, and this, the theme or the project of, of this crash course is a BMS or a body management system for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it might be um, the idea of, of some, some people here. Um, and basically yeah, we're, we're using this project, building this BMS uh, accessory as our kind of canvas to start touching a few things um, in Flux and in, in general. So in the first session, we talked about uh, part validation and selection, so how you select parts, um, how you validate that the parts are correct for uh, for your purposes, um, and a few tips and tricks of issues that you might find um, or that you might cross uh, along the way, and how to how to fix them. And then, so we're taking from there today, and we're going to be creating a schematic of, of, out of all the parts that we put in the canvas in the last session. So, I'm oh, sorry, and then in the next Friday, which is the, the last session, we're gonna be covering board day out and how to do that with some modules and, and rules and so on and so forth. So that's what what's gonna happen next next Friday. And kind of a uh, sort of price that we have going on here. So if any of you create any PCB, we can use, you can use this one and grab this, this project and manufacture it, or you can be one of, uh, of your own baking. Um, we're going to be happy to pay for the first, uh, the first few units and then you get some, some nice swag. So if anybody's interested or is planning to actually do a, a project, um, kind of a, it's a neat, neat opportunity. Um, and we also here to help offline as well. So if you have any questions or issues with, with flags or, or parts or whatever, we're, we're going to be focused on, on this um, at least till the end of the month. So good good opportunity to get the, the project started. Okay, so more specifically, uh, what are we going to learn? So using modules um, and symbols to create efficient schematics or, or clear schematic is easy to read schematics. How you, how you use portals? Uh, we're talking about what, what that is. Um, and also, um, at the end, I want to have some space for hearing a bit from you. So what would you do differently? I mean, there's as many ways of creating schematics or, or rules as EEs are out there. So everybody has its own ways of doing things. So we'd like to hear from you what, um, like what would you do differently or what would you add um, or what strategy do you follow, uh, if any. OK. so. Very quickly through two key concepts that we'll need to keep in mind for, for this session. So one is um, symbols and, and schematics or symbols and parts or symbols and modules. So the sim a symbol is the external representation uh, of a part um, or a module. So if you drag a module or a part into the canvas, what you're gonna see first is the symbol. So it's what whoever created that part thought it, it represented that part in an easy way, right? So if you go open and see what's inside the symbol or inside the part, you're gonna find the schematic for that part. So the schematic is actually like how the electrical connections of that part work. Um, so for example, in this in this case, in this example that I have here, like I drag one sub layout, which is a USB, um, USB connector with a power converter. The sub layout, also the symbol is just a, USB, so the USB icon plus um, like an icon indicating that there is a sub module. If you open that part and you go to the to the insides of, of the part, let's say, you find what exactly that is. So you have a USB port plus few resistors and the, the power converters. Um, and then you can also, so all these are symbols as well, right? So for example, the USB connector is so symbol. So I could right click and open that symbol. And I could, I might find that it's just a part, so only a footprint, or I might just find that it's another module with more stuff in it. So this is infinitely nestable. Let's say you can go on and on until you find something that is kind of at the end, which is just a part. This is gonna be 
more sense when um, we do the, the demo in a little bit. And then the, the portals, um, and we kind of call it, we call it portals in, in some other tools is similar to net labels. Um, and then they basically just allow you to wirelessly connect to different nets. So for example, in this case, um, what I, what I have clicked is where the trace is, uh, is, is light, light blue. And then all the light, all, all the blue traces are selected, right? So every, everywhere that you have this V bus A, which is the portal will be connected together. So all the V bus A nets will be connected to this part, uh, on the right. And again, we're going to see this live as well, but just let you keep, have this, these two concepts in mind when, when we go into the demo which we're going to be doing right now. OK, so I'm going to open this project. Um, so if you remember from, from, last, uh, from last session, we basically dragged a bunch of parts to the canvas. What I did during the week was drag a bunch of other parts so basically complete the design so that I have all the parts uh, that we need for the design. Uh, and just as a refresher uh, for those who um, who don't remember, this is the the project that we're uh, that we're targeting. It's basically a um, a battery, um, so a hard battery for um, for the Raspberry Pi. So it's a, a board that you attach on top of the Raspberry Pi that contains a battery. And circuitry to charge it. Um, I th think I have the um, pictures of it. Uh, yeah, there we go. Like, yeah, this is the basically what we're, what we're designing. So it has a uh, slot for the battery, and then some circuitry um, to charge the battery, and then be able to power the Raspberry Pi through. The, the body on top. And these are, these are the schematics that the designer provided for, for that. We're just kind of copying this schematic and applying that in, in Flux. All right, so going should back to- the, Should we share the link just so people have their reference? Maybe you already did. Uh, I did last week, but we're gonna do that today as well, for sure. So these are the schematics. And this is the project. And I'm also going to share um, the, the starting point uh, for anybody that wants after the session to, to take a look at the other project. Um, you can use this one and then basically clone it by doing what I'm going to just show you now. So you, when you click on that link, uh, you're going to see something very similar to this, which is actually the same thing. And if you go to here and clone project, you're going to have your own version. Uh, and you can play with that as, as much as you want. You can basically do what, what I'm going to show in this demo, or you can, again, play around with it, see what parts are in there, um, work with the design. And, and actually, and a, a, good, a good idea would be, if there's, if, if there's something that we've missed um, or something that you would have done differently to kind of clean up the schematic, we'd, we'd love to see that. So if you want to clone the project, do it, and then let us know. That, that would be amazing. All right, so going back to, to this project, um, I'm going to quickly touch on terminals. Um, it's, it's not really a um complex concept but um just to show what what it how it works so basically if i click on this trace uh it has this so this is a a, a portal is a part that you drag from the library um this net, net portal for example um and then when you connect it and then change the designator to specific thing for example in this case uh the designator that i added was ntc um, well, actually, Jerwin did this one. Um, and then you add another portal, exact same thing with the same designator. The nets connected to that portal are going to be connected together. So if you see 
the blue here, the blue here, they're basically connected together. You can do the same thing with all the other portals. Here, all the trees are connected, here as well, so on and so forth. This allows us to avoid having multiple wires running kind of on top of each other. Um, so in this case, we're kind of wirelessly connected, while in this, if we hadn't do that, we would need to grab a wire from this point and then connect it all the way here. Um, and in this case, you could have basically put the resistor uh, just underneath, but in some other cases, um, for example, I can click on this net. Um, so this net is here, is here um, as well. So I should have moved everything here, but if I move everything here, all these are gonna be far away from the chip. So you get, you get the point. Okay, so talking about sort of schematics in general, um, as I was saying before, many EEs have kind of their own way of doing things. Um, the rule that I usually follow uh, and something that, that you can happily use or um, again, share uh, if, if you have a different one, this is the way that the designer of the, of the original um, schematic put things. For me, it's, it's a bit confusing. I'm not sure what, what's going on in this circuit, um, like at least in, in a bird's eye view. So I usually try to follow uh, this rule, which is I put the inputs on the left. So the inputs of the circuit on the left, the outputs of the circuit on the right, and then power usually goes on top. Um, like again, so some people might have slightly different ways of, 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 um, of doing this. But it's a, it's a good starting point. Um, so these are the two inputs. So it's a USB, uh, this is a USB, micro USB, um, and the USB C that are the input to the basically to be able to charge the battery. So what I can do is move them. Sorry. It's uh, going to move them. to the left. These are the outputs. Uh, they're kind of already on the right, which is a good thing. So this is the output that goes to so the header that goes to the Raspberry Pi uh, to, to power it. Um, and there's also a USB, like standard USB A connector that you can use to power something else that is not the Raspberry Pi. So you could power other type of boards, um, or even use it as a kind of a USB power bank kind of sort of, sort of thing. And then this one is the actual the actual battery with some circuitry that we're going to be talking about um, in in a, in a few minutes. And this is just a switch that essentially disconnects the battery from the rest of the circuitry. So as I mentioned before, where I like to do usually is put power on top. So you have the battery with the switch on top of the IC and then inputs on the left. Ah. What do I do? And outputs on the right. Okay, so like already you can start to see that it's it's a little bit cleaner, right? You, you can at least start to understand what the areas are of, of the circuit. Um, and then again, if you're following something, some, some different structure rules, that, that's fine, but keep them consistent across your designs or across the different modules that you create. So that as soon as, some, as so when someone wants to read your design, if they understand the first one, or they might be kind of a bit lost if they're using the different structure at, at first, but they're gonna quickly understand it and then kind of surf through all your other designs or sub modules and, and, and whatever, because um, they understand what your structure is. So keep it consistent, whatever that structure is. So now I wanna, talk about a little bit more about um, sub-modules and, um, and symbols. So we have this part here, which if we go back to the reference is 
this part over here. Um, so we have the battery, some circuitry, which we can look for, for example, is this one in this case, is a battery protection IC. Um, and then we have a bunch of transistors. So Q8, Q5, and Q6, um, they're transistors. The truth is that if you haven't seen this, this, this exact circuit before, it's almost impossible to understand what, what that is, like just by quickly glancing through it. Um, this one, for example, we can, right? So it's a switch um, with a transistor. Um, so it's basically probably a switch with some um, background prevention or, or something along those lines, but you can kind of quickly glance and roughly understand what it is. Same, same thing here. Um, so feedback, feedback protection and the USB, uh, in this case, the USB-C. Um, right, again, same thing here and same thing kind of everywhere. So we were kind of quickly be able to understand what the circuit is. In this case, whoever is seeing our design for the first time, just can't. Um, it, it, it takes, it will take at least a few minutes to understand, depending on how, how much experience whoever is, is seeing it uh, has. Um, but if we go to the data sheet of, of this specific IC, which is this one, and we go to the reference, we see this, right? And it's like, okay, this is already much clearer. Um, so if the data sheet of the component is clearer than our schematic, <laughs> something is most, most of the times wrong um, because designs should be super clear. Um, as or even more than the schematics, but we kind of have a, now we're having a kind of a better idea of, of what what this works here. Um, so this is um, over discharge and this is over charge. So basically, what this circuit does is this is the the actual uh, protection circuit, the protection IC. So it will sense the the current uh, and the voltage of the battery, and then if it's overcharging, it will cut this switch. Um, if it's over discharging, it will cut this switch, essentially disconnecting one of the terminals. So the circuit, the circuit is going to be closed, uh, sorry, open, and no, no current is going to be flowing. So it's going to be, it's a protection circuit. But seeing it from here is a lot clearer um, than seeing it from here, or I mean, from here as well, because it's, it's essentially the same, the same circuit. So we should be doing something about it. Uh, and then we have another, like an extra um, part here. Uh, that again, like just seeing that is kind of confusing. So if you know that it's a transistor, you can tell like which one is the gate, um, which is the source, and then kind of picture that in your head, but you need a ton of experience. Um, and we don't need whoever's looking at our design to have to think a lot about like before understanding something. We know them to be able to quickly understand what it is um, with, with, with the less time possible. That's what a clean and receive risk schematic is. Like it should give whoever is reading it the possibility to understand it pretty fast. So this is basically, um, so if there's uh, reverse polarity uh, in the ends of the battery here, it will kind of it will essentially turn on this, this LED uh, and then cut the bottom trace. Same thing uh, that these things are here. So if there's reverse polarity, it will cut the negative terminal, um, and in this case also um, turn on this LED. So this is actually where um, submodules in flux start become interesting, right? Because if you see this, this is it's already like kind of a circuit on its own. It has one specific function and like kind of explicit ins and outs. So what we can do in Flux is say, okay, I'm gonna just make this one module. Um, if to basically you can just select the whole, like all the parts and then right click and then convert a part. Um, so basically what, what Flux is gonna do is gonna condense all these um, components into one component um, with kind of a standard symbol, right? Flux doesn't know what that is, at least not yet. So we will just create a standard symbol um, 
but we can we can play with it. So now if I open this this part, uh, sorry, so go back to this. So now if I kind of somehow be able to explain what this part is, is one thing that I need to explain instead of like multiple parts with wires all over the place. Um, so let's go let's go back to this circuit, which is the one that I just converted into a part. Um, so we we kind of ha now have an idea of, of how it works. So a few things that we can do is try to clean it up a little bit. So if you if it was me, what I would do is um, so this is connected all, all together. So I would try to be um, to make it as symmetric as um, the gravity. Um, as possible. So in this case, this one was B minus. Um, and then connected to the rest of the, of the circuit. And then something that actually happened to me. Uh, so this is um, something that I, that I actually faced myself. So something that you should do as soon as you connect a, a portal is check that your connection is, is right. So for example, I created this other portal uh, before, which is connected to B plus, um, at least theoretically. But if I click on it, and this one is also called B plus, it's not highlighting the nets. Um, so it's highlighting the nets on the right, but not the ones on the left. But if you zoom in, okay, B plus, um, and also B plus in this case. So there's, you already know that there's something um, something wrong. So in this case, what is wrong is that I have a space at the end. This is actually it was actually a mistake. I I put I I tried it didn't put this in on purpose. Um, but as soon as I delete that space, now um, oh the both both ends are, are uh, connected. So what I'm trying to say here is that as as you go and, and do things in design, kind of build this mechanism of, of checking what, what you just did. Um, because sometimes mistakes like this can be super costly, super, super costly, um, because they're kind of the same, but not, and they're not connected. Um, so this is kind of something that we deal with with experience. Uh, check this, this few things. The good thing about flux is that when you highlight a net, like it's super clear where it should be. Uh, so if you're not seeing the blue, it's like, okay, something's wrong. Um, and that's kind of, super easy with, with, with this uh, way of, of showing things. So, um, okay, now we kind of have it a little bit more um, symmetric. You can do as, as much as much symmetric as, as you <laughs> actually want. Um, and then and again, if, if it was me, what I would do is I would put it something like this and then the negative, I'm sorry. The negative end where down, which is usually where the negatives uh, are. But again, like this is kind of like very personal. Now, the, the good thing, as, as I was saying before, um, so I can try to start publishing some of um, some of my changes. So basically, what I did uh, just just now is if I go here and then publish the changes, I update, I, I basically signal to the to whoever is using this part that there's an update. Um, so I can go on and do as many changes as, as, I, as I want, but if I don't publish them, whoever is using it, so in this case, this design is not gonna have the, the, later, the, the latest version. Um, this is something that, that you actually need to, need to do. Um, so as I said before, um, went back to this and I wanna, try to leave, um, get this one short so that we can discuss um, in a QA after. You can create whatever symbols you want. So right, again, going back to this, the symbol that I have in this case, uh, so the standard one that Flux gave me was a uh, rectangle. Um, this doesn't make, doesn't make it better to, to show that, okay, this is a battery with, um, protection circuitry and so on and so forth. Like it actually makes it worth uh, because like, I have no idea what this is. Uh, but the good thing is that you can import custom um, custom symbols. 
in flags. So the way to do that is you can create your, your whatever symbol you want in uh, SVG format. And we have a bunch of um, tutorials on how to do that yourself. I'm not gonna um, do the, um, like I'm not gonna create a symbol live. I already have one that I created, but if I go to assets and then uh, add, an, add an item, I created this symbol uh, earlier today. So I can open it and then Flux is gonna automatically know that I put an SVG and then make it the symbol for this part, right? So now if I um, publish the changes, so you can already see that the symbol has been updated. So now if I, um, how is this called? Holy Ember. So if I, I mean, I could update this part or I can find a new one. Um, so this part is now in the library so anybody can use it. So if I try to find this um, part that I just created and then grab it and then put it here. Now, the mess that was before um, became a symbol that is super easy to tell, right? I mean, and you can do whatever symbol you want um, and you can change it and, 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 and play with it. But essentially now you have a representation of what that circuit means. And then whoever is looking at, at this circuit, um, can do like this one, is gonna say, oh, so I have a battery that has under and, and overcharge cuts reverse polarity cut, an LED, and that is connected to a um, switch that eventually essentially allows me to cut the circuit completely. Um, so this switch is just a like a mechanical switch that you, um, that you cut off. So we went from going back to um, the other project before, from having this mess um, in, 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 the main, in the middle of our circuit that it was impossible for us to understand to by just creating a symbol on, on our own, having this um, that explains it a lot better. I mean, I actually created this part um, that has the terminal in the right um positions so basically what what you would do in this case drag the one that i created before so i basically i added the two the two pins and i'm just going to show you how it, how you can do that now uh, and then basically from here um you can create that you can connect the two portals Whoop. And then I can call this one um, B plus, for example. And now I have everything connected um, the way the way it should be. So connected uh, here, so all to the other traces that it should be. And again. You can use this, for example, and I kind of leave this exercise to you. Um, you can grab this filter, which also is kind of a bit, it's not as uh, difficult to understand, but you can replace all this by just one module that describes, okay, I'm a, I'm a high pass filter, right? I'm a low pass filter, whatever, whatever I am. Um, and then all of a sudden, whoever is looking at the, at the circuit will, from a Bird's eye view, say, oh, I have a battery with protection circuit refine uh, switch. I have a bunch of inputs, so USB A and USB micro, sorry, um, USB C and micro USB. I have the power, the, 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 the power charger or the power charging IC, and then my, my outputs. So with a very few and quick steps, you go from something that it's super hard to understand to something that it's way, way cleaner. 
Um, and again, you can go as deep as you want. Again, you can go grab this, uh, kind of leave the exercise to you and convert it to a part and done. So before I close it and uh, we go to the q and there's something that I uh, forgot to, to show. So when, um, so you have all, all these portals that wirelessly connect the traces together, right? The way that you connect things to the, in this case, the outside world of this part is through terminals. Um, so you need to basically grab a terminal, um, which is essentially a pin, and then you place it and then call it, uh, this one was uh, C plus, if I recall correctly. So what this is going to do is going to create the pins here so that you can connect stuff to it. So if you remember the one that I dragged before, it was holy amber. Yeah, this one. This one doesn't have the pins. Um, so this is part of the symbol, but it doesn't have the pins, so I cannot connect anything to it. So what you need to do in order to be able to connect stuff to it is to add terminals. This is basically what um, expresses your inputs and outputs. So for example, if I didn't want to put a battery, but rather some input from the circuit, I could delete this one and then potentially put two other terminals um, on this end. And then that what would that do is that my circuit now has an input. So when I come back here, for example, I would have a pin here and I could connect something to it instead of the battery. Um, but this is kind of a, um, what, I, what I was missing to, to show. So yeah, that's kind of it. Um, I wanted to try and keep it a bit shorter this time. Um, and just as a quick recap, one minute before, before we close it, <clears throat> try to grab um, so the kind of the general tips and tricks, create a structure of schematics that, that you like, um, and then apply it consistently in, in all your designs. The one that we followed for this specific design was inputs on the left, outputs on the right, whatever transforms the into inputs to the outputs in the middle, and then power on top. Um, then we showed how portals work. So how you can create, grab a portal from the library and drag it and then wirelessly connect different traces. And then lastly, what we did was grabbed a chunk of the design that wasn't clear or that was complex or that even th this design could be used somewhere else, right? So if now I need to use this battery uh, in a completely new design, I can search it in the, in the library um, I didn't change the name, so it's still hold the amber. Um, but if I wanted to change the name, I could just click here and change the name, um, and then look holy amber, and then drag drag it to my um, to another circuit. So it's, it's, it has both purposes. So one, you can create a symbol so that it's very clear to whoever is seeing it what what that part is actually doing, and also makes it reusable. So now you have again a battery with. Um, the potential circuitry, so you can grab and, dr and drag this part and use it in, in any other design. And if you make this one actually public, uh, for example, anyone can view. Um, no, I'm sorry, the, the part, not the, um, not the design. So I make the part anyone can view. Anybody will be able to find it in the library and use it on, on the design. So yeah, that's what I had for Today I'm gonna delete this one that we don't need anymore. Um, and <clears throat> so kind of the, the the other part of the of the question is or the if if there's something that that you would do differently or if you have a different structure that that you use uh, that is not inputs uh, on the left and outputs on the right and then power on top. Like, do you have something else like or, or do you use um, submodules? Um, in your design, like what, what what type of structures do you guys do you guys follow? Do you have any um, ideas? I know we have a few EEs here that might have their own 
thoughts? I think for me, I like the convention of inputs on the left, outputs on the right. I had a, I was working with another more junior EE who he did a power supply uh, symbol diagram and he had the inputs on the right and then the <laughs> outputs on the left. And I was like, what is this magic LDO that's increasing the voltage? And I was very confused about it. So I love that convention. I think that's really important. I haven't done a ton, ton of sub layouts because it's not um, trivial to do in other editors. Like you basically have to create a hierarchy and that makes all the designs like break almost all the time. So I love that this is a lot easier to accomplish and you can just select and create a part. I think that's really awesome. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. I mean, you, you can even go deeper, right? So you could grab this part, for example, these two, these two transistors and then create a symbol for it that actually shows the two transistors and how they're connected. So that might make it even easier. So when someone clicks on this part and goes deeper and in, uh, they also see the transistors here instead of a square. Um, and that will help them one, one, one step extra uh, to, figure what, to figure out what, what's going on. Yeah, totally. That's the other convention that I think is really important is instead of just doing blocks for your component symbols, mm -hmm. like if they're, if it's explainable at all by drawing symbols that we all understand, then that's something that's very important. Like the, I think these are just FETs, right? So we can just put those in there. Um, there two, yeah, they're basically two MPN FETs, uh, but yeah, exactly. I mean, and this is a something that we probably might do for, for the next session, uh, create a symbol for this part. This is part that I grabbed from the library. Um, so actually good, I got another point that I can show. Um, so if I open this part, I, I, I don't own it. Um, so someone else created this part in this case, um, someone. Um, so what I can do is I can create my own version so I can clone this project, um, and then create a symbol for it and then basically replace the part. Uh, and I would have my own version of this part and the footprint is going to be exactly the same. The terminals are going to be exactly the same, but I just changed the symbol. Uh, so I, impo I improved this part. It's uh, so really a nice flow and low, lower overhead to accomplish that too. Like if I imagine trying to do that in Altium, for instance, what I have to do is track down the person who has created the library that has that part in, ask them very nicely to send it to me or like give it to me on a USB, open it, open that in the editor, and then like futz with the part, break open the integrated library, do it, save it, then open it again, and then drag it into my design. And, and it can't replace all of them at once. It's like nice to have it be much lower overhead than that. It's a long yeah, process. It, and, and then also something that is not, so it's not a roadmap, it's not fully, if not fully, fully ready in flux, but like exactly that, but that workflow can be simplified even more. So instead of, so if, if I, instead of clone the project, I fork the project. So I, I explained what, what that means last, last session, but just to, to rephrase, uh, sorry, to, to recap, cloning a project basically takes the current status of the project uh, or, or the part in this case, and then creates one version of that in my, under my account. If I fork the project, what I basically do is I keep the whole history. So all the changes that whoever created the part did, um, and I create my own version of it. And then eventually, so let's say that I add a new symbol to that, to that part, what I eventually will be able to do is merge it back to the original to say, hey, uh, whoever created this part in this case, um, like I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, uh, but I could say, hey, like I improved your part and these are the changes, right? So the, if, if the owner of the part says, oh, nice, like I have a symbol, this is way cleaner, they could potentially accept that change. And then everybody will benefit. Everybody that used this part will get this update with the new symbol. Uh, and I don't have a new part somewhere else. Like I just contributed back to the community, say so whoever created the part and made it every, every, like better for, for everybody. Um, so these workflows are, are super, super interesting. Um, it's a little bit nicer than um, titling your integrated library. That new, new LDO that was updated on 6.6 <laughs> and then sending it by email to everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A good God, Carrie, did you actually have to use a USB? <laughs> like I have had to do that, yes. Yeah, uh, that was 
physical physical objects have no place in electrical engineering besides the final product. Let's say that. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay. Yeah, and the, 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 the modern, so the remote version of that, so if you work remotely, the remote version of that is email. So instead of <laughs> grabbing the USB drive, you send it via email. I was just thinking like a drive or a Dropbox or something like that. If you want to get fancy, yeah. I mean, but at the end of the day, it's the same thing. It's like just moving a file from, from one place to the next. You lose what happened, who created it, uh, what was the history, like why did you move that? Um, it's, it's just impossible. Yeah, this was for a defense company that is um, maybe 30 years behind the time, something like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I did that like to, in a company like three years ago. So nice. you didn't even need to go 30 years back. Yeah, yeah I, I get it completely. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious, you know, we've got a couple of lawyers in here. We've got a couple of seasoned professionals in here who maybe are used to the, the old ways. Um, and maybe some, you know, our lawyer friends uh, have fresh eyed. What do you guys think about these methods here, especially where they diverge from traditional methods is it weird or does it seem cool yeah, feel free to unmute um yeah. Hi, that, um, sorry that that was directed for half towards me um <laughs> I, yeah I, so I, I know also like babysitting a kid <laughs> but um i know i love this because it's kind of like i tried the um I assume that you mean um, the more professional, not professional, the more like, as you said, traditional, like hardcore software that's really inaccessible to me. Um, I can't think of any names right now. Um, this is very ac accessible to me. I, I, I kind of see the road ahead and it's really easy for me to think to myself, all right, once um, I understand this better, I can put together something pretty like intuitively. And I can't say anything else I've ever tried is intuitive. So. Yeah, Feels no, good. I, I like the idea of, uh, I like the modular approach towards this. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess, Tom, you've already had some experience creating your own module. <laughs> like on your yeah. Own schematics. Yeah. Um, Where are you at in that whole process? Uh, well, I got uh, things kind of put on hold for a couple of weeks because of other issues I'm dealing with, but I tried to revisit it this morning and ran into something strange, which I sent into sent over to Nicholas. So oh nice. So but yeah, I'm gonna try to uh spend some time on it this weekend. Cool. I just got uh sidetracked. So well you're educating future um lawyers. <laughs> no, I'm educating art students. It's, so, which is more fun than educating lawyers. So, oh, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know art students. Very cool. Well, Wick, did you have a project in mind that uh, you were going to build? So, um, I, I don't know if you know about the. He, he I, can, I actually can't remember his name right now. He's um, he's based in San Francisco. He builds these little like tiny structures, like, these sculptures. Um, I can't remember his name. I, I think it's an Indian name, and um, I, 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 I'm literally I'm literally copying his schematics. That's all I'm doing. And like, I, I just want to see he doesn't do them on a PCB board, which is why I'm interested in doing it on a PCB board because I want to see like how to flatten it. What happens when I have something that's very simple that I can um, see in 3D, like, uh, you know, with, with an IC and stuff like that and flatten it onto a PCB board. That, that's just what I'm all I'm thinking about right now. I'm doing tiny baby steps. Oh, that's awesome. Is this, is this that artist that we've, we've shared him in Slack a bunch, right guys? The, the he makes like these structures. Mohid. I think if somebody said it, I would remember if somebody said his name, I think his it, name is Mohit and he does like yes. 3D structures, yeah. Yeah, we actually talked to him because he works, he's a like lead engineer at Particle.io, I think. 
that's exactly who it is. Yes. And, yeah. and I, I'm just kind of, you know, I, I am so much so like, I don't know anything about anything. I'm just kind of like feeling my way to on step one. And like, to me, that I thought they were very cool. They're very accessible. I can buy the parts. Yeah. And now I'm over here on with you guys being like, okay, let me, let me do that. Let me do this on a PCB board. And that's step two, you know? So. Yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. I, we, yeah. We'd love to work with you on that too. I think sure, yeah. low heat's designs are through hole components. So you just have to change the, uh, the package to, so it sits flat, but that should be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Awesome. I, I would love to have help. I mean, I'm kind of like, I, you know, I, I think I'm two thirds of the way there, but there's just certain things I don't get. Like what if there's not a part, you know, that you guys don't have it, like, a, yeah. I don't know, to build a solar cell. Like I, I just, you know, there's kind of stuff that's, I do get now and there's stuff that's just four yeah. steps beyond me. So. Yeah. Well, we're here for you. I mean, part of the reason why we're doing this course is to improve flux, you know, improve the user experience, identify anything, any sticky points or anything that's like not intuitive and uh, make it better. So that's why we have the incentive to pay for your boards. So if you want to do it, you know, and you're available before June 30th, I think is the deadline. So you got mm -hmm. 20 days or something like that. Um, and that goes for anybody. You know. so, well, I'll bring, I'll bring it over to Slack because I, I have the, I have his blinking satellite all done except for this, the um, solar panel. And I'll just kind of see what you guys think. I love that one. That's so, yeah. so cool. <laughs> I always wondered like the mechanics, the physical technique, how he gets those like super yeah. straight, uh, you know, right angles and stuff. So it's it's actually, so all you, you just need a drill. You need a drill and a pair of pliers and the drill, you, you kind of like wind it with the drill and it turns very straight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is such a, good, it. Like, a Yeah, I see it. I, I see it right now on Instagram. I see it. Yeah. Oh, I love that little lander too. I saw him. He's uh, very cool. Yeah. They're kind of like whimsical, but I also thought, well, this is how I can learn. I'm like, I can't go to college for this, but I can learn like with you guys and with uh, something I can see with my, my own two eyes, you know? Totally. You pick a, I mean, you pick a cool enough project and that in itself is motivating enough to yeah. cool. good old project based learning. Right. Uh, exactly. Hey guys, quick, quick question for, for the, art students in, in the audience. Um, um, if you touch these sculptures, do you get electrocuted? Is that what's going on here, right? <laughs> I don't think that's a question for non-art students. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. This is, from, this, is from very, this is very cool. Thanks for sharing. I, but never heard of this guy before, so. Yes, yeah, so you get zapped. Um, it's actually a defense system. To keep the art students away. <laughs> okay, no, I see it in the first video in his grid right at the top upper left, um, he's actually holding it. So somehow, I guess you're able to actually touch the copper without shorting it. So that's fun. It, it's brass. For, it actually, it's brass, oh. which, I, which I didn't know. And also, um, he has, if you go into his website, not his Instagram, but his website, they ha he has all the schematics published. Mm. What guy? This one's amazing. <laughs> I'm good at it shouldn't shock you if you, it's grounded properly, right? <laughs> I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Does anybody else have projects that you want to build or help building? I I actually do. Like my my parents are like we're moving to a new house, so they want automatic blinds. They want automatic roller blinds, but they don't want it to connect to a power source. So I need like a solar like a solar cell connected to like some charger that connects to a, uh, to a, uh, what's it called? A stepper motor. And then that has to connect to an ESP32 that, uh, that I can control with my phone. So I've been wanting to try that. <laughs> you have like so, sunlight sensors, you know, some, uh, heat sensors on the outside and they just automatically. <laughs> yeah. And, and then like, I, I think they also want it to be like automatically going up and down and learn. So like, I probably need to use that ESP32 to talk to an influx database at some point and then just like build my ML model on the back. But <laughs> oh my God. like the circuit part though will be fun. The ML part is going to suck. <laughs> that, that I know. <laughs> your parents are so lucky. Yeah, yeah. They, they're like, you got your degree. You better do something now. Go make oh, some I automatic solar blinds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, if you can help with that, that would be great. 
Yeah, that's wicked. Is your background in EE or more software? Yeah, I, I'm an EE and I'm a, I'm a data scientist, but I haven't done hardware design before. I, I, I was more on the electromagnetic side and I, I never got to hardware design. So that's why I'm kind of here. So <laughs> I, let's do it. Very yeah. little background in hardware, but enough with software. So <laughs> I've done about a fair amount of off grid sensor solutions for various folks, various um, customers that shall not be named. Um, <laughs> But that sounds like something really cool. I mean, there's a lot of um, blocks in there that are easily recognizable just from your description. So I think we can definitely accomplish it. Okay, yeah. And I guess some incentive for you guys, maybe it's a, I, I am an influencer. Uh, we have four accounts that have quite a few followers and, and I can document the process on there if you guys want at some point. So All right. <laughs> Let's go viral. <laughs> <laughs> but, so uh, just, I remember going down this path a while back um, and I remember finding a number of like fairly good examples of people rolling their own <clears throat> battery operated roller shades. Um, and I believe they use the ESP32. Um, my bent when I was, when I was looking into it was trying to like patch into the proprietary serial protocols of the existing vendors. Um, because I didn't want to invent everything from scratch. Um, and that's, I, I guess I abandoned the project. So that, that can tell you something. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we have Carrie and you can try again. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. I can decode the serial protocol, but everything else I can do, <laughs> we can help you invent the rest of it. Uh, me yeah. trying to invent that is much easier than me trying to figure out the serial protocol. <laughs> I I am like I'd be more I'd be happier if I would if I could contribute to an open source library for smart home that becomes an app than Ooh. trying to yeah break through proprietary stuff. <laughs> that's really that's cool. that just hurts. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got a a new project that I've been sketching out and and done some three D printing on. Uh, uh, basically, I want to take 12 LEDs, uh, 12 RGB LEDs, and be able to customize the sequence and the color. Nice. For so, one of the models? No, this is something else. So um, okay. just want to see if I can do it. And it's so it's going to involve uh, shift registers with the Ardu Arduino and Okay. Yeah, learning learning to play with uh, RGB LEDs. So yeah, you can do a lot with those. Yeah, uh, I've got to I've got to go, guys. So it was great to see you, see y'all, and I'll see you next week. So cool. Thanks, Thanks Tom. Tom. All right. Good good Later. I mean, whoever wants to work on a project, we got you know, we got Carrie, we got Charm, we got Nicholas. Um, you know, tons of support. So. Now is a good time for moving it across the finish line. Um, feel free to reach out. Hopefully you're on the Slack, you know, and we can work with you one-on-one -on -one or in a group channel, um, whatever. Then we'll get you some some boards. It's so satisfying. Yeah, I'm actually, boards, if, you know? if I might cut in, um, I, Jason, are you, are you considering working on a project right now? Do you have anything in mind? Um, nothing specific right now, but I have always in the back of my head, I have an interest in audio, like professional audio stuff. Um, but it also tends to be more advanced and I'm not really, I don't feel that advanced yet. So it's always like a work in progress and fumble my way around. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. do that too. Um, one of my college projects was, it was a digital filtering class and I wanted my, um, time at school to be useful so I <laughs> made a PCB for for my final project and the PCB was essentially an ADC analog to digital converter and a digital to analog converter with a microprocessor sitting in the middle some analog filters and then I did some digital filters on the microprocessor and so this you just plug in a headphone cable on one side a headphone cable on the other side and then to your ear it sounds like nothing is happening to the sound because it's perfectly reconstructing it on the other side you could twist some potentiometers and get the digital filters to do some crazy stuff. You could um, like sample it and then flash some LEDs based on what's happening. So definitely all possible. We can we can do all these things. Okay, I'll have to look for stuff. It sounds like a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool project. 
We tried putting it into a guitar and see what it does to it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Jason, if you're on, um, are you on our Slack yet? Because yeah, you yeah. can reach out. Yeah, I you are good. think I should be Jay Gertz on there. Oh, good, good. Yeah, you know, if you've got questions or something you want to work on, um, you know, we're trying to get swag to you. We're trying to incentivize you with, with paying for the board. And then we got a lot of help here too. So, you know, if you have parents who need um, some guitar amps or something, hey, you know, now you can be the cool son as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pretty cool. <clears throat> um, also, um, I was just curious, um, William, or do you go by Will? Um, I'm curious what your accounts are. Uh, I actually, I go by Wick. Um, Wick. My, 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 my Flex account, I, uh, you know, I have, I have a baby. It's just kind of. Oh, I mean, your, your, your influ I want to stalk your, your influencer life oh, here. Oh, I, I, have, I, have, I, only, I have one account and it has nothing to do with electrical engineering or anything. It's, it's a Marcus Aurelius quote page. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I meant um, William Ong. Oh, not me. Okay. okay. That is my name. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, we're mainly on TikTok and we do ASMR stuff, but now my dad wants me to do science stuff. So we're starting up another account. I have an AI backend that runs like our optimizers, but I can put those, I can put the names of all our accounts in the chat. Yeah, do it, do it. They're, they're on do TikTok, it. so. Great. Um, and we haven't figured out YouTube yet because my optimizers keep getting hit with like DNS problems, so. <laughs> oh, wow. And then, the, yeah, the problem is uh, the bot detectors are way better on YouTube. <laughs> right. So um, I can't swing super hard on YouTube. I actually have to, we actually have to make content that works with YouTube, which is something we're still trying to figure out. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's our four TikTok accounts. Um, there's quite a bit of reach. We, we hit about a billion impressions last year or so, and we're trending up. So, so yeah, if, if you're interested in free publicity, uh, I just want to learn circuits and things. And <laughs> if you guys ever need a marketing team. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Can you make uh, EE related ASMR content? I'm, I'm real, my parents <laughs> want me to start making EE related content. So I'm like, they're like, you have a degree, go do EE stuff now. And I was like, <laughs> and, they're, and they're, I was like, what would I be showing them that's different? They're like, no, there's nothing different, but you get to speak with an English accent. So people like, <laughs> And I was like, okay, you got a point. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we're starting up another account. We have a few other test ones, but but yeah, TikTok's our main bay. And it's it's they're 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 not huge, but they're they're good enough to get some revenue for us. Not so. huge. You have two point million followers on your personal TikTok account. <laughs> uh, 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 okay. <laughs> I thought yeah. I was cool when my uh, Instagram account got like 24,000 followers. Like, oh, cool. Wow. Great. Yeah, that's a lot. I honestly no, think two points. This is, million. This, is, this is the real deal here. Instagram is like really hard to grow. So like whatever you did to get that, that is really good. <laughs> like my Instagram sucks. <laughs> this is my, I'll, I'll, I'll post my old, um, let's see. This is my old one. I don't, I don't post here anymore. There we go. <laughs> nice yeah i <clears throat> yeah we uh turns out when i was an intern that my all my interns like they uh they told me that i sucked at social media and i said yeah i do suck so i was like i'm an ai machine learning guy i might as well play my test my luck with tiktok uh, and then now they don't tell me i'm bad at social media anymore which is great <laughs> wow Oh, cool. You do a lot of photography stuff. So you do stuff that requires lots of skill. <laughs> I, I used, I, I cosplayed as an influencer in 2020 and decided I didn't like it um, because it's hard. <laughs> and so I joined Flux so I could learn how to be an EE and design EE software because somehow that's actually easier than being yeah. an influencer. Influencering is so rough because like, you know, those like, like trying to get those brand deals and stuff like they. <laughs> Like so many people just want to barter collab and like, <clears throat> and then like, if you've gotten those hacker emails, like they say they're going to give you like 10 grand for a post and they send you like a, the S an SCR script. And I'm like, hi friend, I run Linux. This won't work. Just control them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, they, 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 they like new hackers are horrible. They're kind of creative though, which is like, I got to respect that, but 
<laughs> but but no, I'm I am also a cybersecurity person, so don't don't play this. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. Like you actually, you actually have travel videos. I wish I could travel. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you should check out my YouTube as well. Um, yeah, your YouTube probably has way more than like yeah my my YouTube only like it's wimpy. I it's hard out there, y'all. It's hard out there. But you know, I never tried ASMR electrical engineering videos so maybe that's the untapped market here yeah soldering videos man that's the move watching that solder reflow process that's pretty nice <laughs> actually legal videos are the new hotness fyi yeah. <laughs> is that watching law students crying or what's that <laughs> no just the amber heard video has created a bunch of new youtube celebrities almost overnight that's yeah. true that's true that, are they that what, like commenters? Yeah. yeah, like what what kind of what kind of influencers did it create? Are they like do they comment on trials now or what's their the attorneys copies. attorneys turned YouTube talking heads? Yeah. yeah. And then they say like hashtag not legal advice. And then... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I if I actually do YouTube, I might like I, I don't know what I would ever do, but <laughs> it's wild out there, guys. Yeah, I'll just start doing origami and I'll end up doing something really stupid. And then the stupid thing's going to end up working and I'll be like, well, this is my life now. <laughs> that is, that's how it works when you're locked in. Um, cool, guys. What else? We got anything else going on here? Any other questions or thoughts? No, I, I'm very excited for your help because I have no clue how to do hardware design. So, <laughs> like, I, I do. I've done some stuff in TCAD, but very, very minimally. And also, my my new job, they like they started. They're putting me in a more hardware design role. They put me in their lab. So I'm like, oh, okay, great. And they're like, you you have a degree, so you need to do some of that stuff. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll learn now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, if uh, if uh. Like if I if if this tool works out, if Flux works well for me, I, I might just ask me and D to buy it. So <laughs> I'll be like, I just, yeah, I, I'll I'll see what I can do, but <laughs> no promises, of course. Let's get you a board first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Cool. This was fun. Thanks, Nico, for putting this together. Thanks, guys, no for hanging out. There's there's more coming out next week, so. Hope to see you guys there as well. Will do.